You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. Yep. After Buzz TV. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Courtney Loves Dallas After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Courtney Loves Dallas After oh, Show. My ex is Hello, I am Courtney Henderson here with AfterBuzz TV. Welcome, welcome. We are here talking about Courtney Loves Dallas. Uh, we're going to talk about the first episode from last week and then tonight's episode, Courtney Loves Fashion. Last week was Courtney Loves Life and just kind of introduced her to her own show, Break Off Star from Most Eligible Dallas. And tonight I have uh, my co-host. I'm Stephanie McGrath. Thanks, Court. And a special guest. And I'm Matt Nordgren. Yes. From Texas. From Texas. Whose exes live in Texas, apparently. Apparently. I <laughs> so, picked that song. <laughs> he did. He did. Uh, seems appropriate, given uh, the way that you're kind of maybe swung to look a little bit on the show so far. We have seen the ending, I guess, for those of you that didn't see Most Eligible Dallas. Uh, the end of that show was kind of steamy between Courtney and Matt. And that was three years ago now? At, at, at least two. At I don't even two. know. What, what year? Uh, 2013, 2011? 2011. Yeah, two and a half years, maybe. So then she broke off and started doing this show, Courtney Loves Dallas, and we see you on it. Uh, the second episode starts off, well, the, the first episode ends and the second episode starts with uh, you guys seeing each other for the first time in about a year uh, at this party. Yeah. And so I guess for you, how, how was that? How is it, you know, having someone that's so close to you go from friend to what looks like very romantic to I haven't talked to you in a year. Almost yeah, it, strangers. It's, it's, a, it's a very unique deal because, you, you know, it, you, when you do these TV shows, you start to um, lose a sense of what's real and what isn't, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, much like I, I've, I've talked about it before to some people, like when you're in fifth grade, okay, how, how many people were in your fifth grade class? Oh, like 20? Like 20. 30 something, or yeah. Or sixth or seventh <laughs> yeah, grade. Yeah. Like 20 yeah. or 30. That's your <laughs> world, right? Right. And yeah. you spend an entire year or two years or three years with 20 people, okay? And, you know, I've, I've, I'm, I'm not an entertainment person or media. I'm a finance person, a business right. guy. But doing the show, I, I started to understand why all these people that do the, 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 the movies together always end up being like having a romantic relationship. And it's, it's much like somebody who's in fifth grade or sixth grade or seventh grade. That's your world. And you spend an entire year or six months, nine months, whatever it is with those amount of people. Yeah, of course. And so you're going to, you're going to ultimately have, you know, whatever kind of relationship with people that are in that circle of sm a small circle. Right. of people. Mm. And so, you know, I, you know, that's what ended up starting to happen in, in with, you know, seven or eight people filming a TV show for, an, it took us six to nine months. And, um, you know, I, 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 I feel like it was like uh, an ultimatum towards the end of the first season that we needed to have some kind of, um, you know, resolution or a way to spark a second season right. and you kind of get caught up in it and you don't know what's going on and next thing you know um you know rumors are flying absolutely and and they did and we're seeing on Courtney Loves Dallas the repercussions of those rumors and things uh from watching it it looks like for Court it's it was a lot more real and it, it carried through in her day-to-day -day life a lot more than it sounds like it did for you um Granted, that didn't stop her from, it looks like, quitting her job and starting this fashion this fashion blog and, and all of these things that she's doing on the show. She's named one of the 10 most beautiful women of 
of Dallas, Dallas and uh, in the D magazine and everything. But what's interesting when you were saying about how you just felt like you got caught up and maybe influenced from like the producers about to to bring on for the next season, the two of you should get together. I mean, really, even from the initial first episode, you're just painted in such a negative, ugly light, you know, for her to carry on this show and just being the single girl that just has had such bad luck with guys. Yeah, I, I don't know if I was, in, you know, influenced from producers or anything like that. I mean, mm -hmm. I wouldn't put it on anybody else other than the cast because... Unlike a lot of reality television, um, and I, I, I've got friends that have done every every kind out there, and, mm. and I've been on the business side of it, so I understand how it works. We had zero script. They yeah. didn't tell us what to do. Of course, they influenced us to do certain things, but what they, dis what they did was have enough content so that they could edit, you know, even a five-hour dinner, and you only need two minutes of content from right. it. Yeah. And you've got a person reacting to, uh, you know, 15 different questions in different ways where you can pair them up however you like and get the content you like. So yeah. they never, it wasn't producer's fault. But, you know, I think ultimately, um, you know, you talk about, and I haven't even, I literally have not seen, and I'm not saying this because I don't wish Courtney luck. I really hope it goes well for her. And like, you know, I, I think she's got her, a, a business mentality and Courtney's going to take the world by storm. But, you know, I haven't seen it. Yeah. And it's not because I don't care about it. I, I just haven't had time and, and it's not on my like radar screen, but, um, you know, it wasn't because of producers. It wasn't because, um, I don't, uh, you know, I don't want Courtney to do well, but I, I generally, uh, genuinely think that we got, you know, caught up in the moment a little bit. Mm. Um, so I'm curious, where do you two stand now? Because the way that the show is going, uh, it looks like the next episode is about you guys going to dinner and, you know, all of that unraveling. And so, right. mm. you know, I, I guess maybe, you know, no spoilers, but but I'm curious. Like, I mean, where do you guys stand now? Do you talk at all? Are you friends? Or it's totally we're, cut we're, off? We're very cordial. Like, mm -hmm. if we saw each other out in Dallas, which I... I don't get there very often, and when I do, it's for business, family. Yeah, of course. And and I, I don't do a lot, although Dallas will always be home. We, we, we don't talk. Um, not because I don't want to. I would like to. Um, you know, I, I, like I was talking about earlier, I don't know, I don't know where her head is. This was a girl who was the funniest, coolest um, yeah, and you see that around. you see that in this season. So, like so, she uses she uses the phrase. Um, she goes to this meeting and she talks about looking skinny and being in this outfit, being like a power dgiac. Right. Look, like, who thinks of the, that? The <laughs> yeah. Courtney you see right now at, and she's older than me, and I'm 31, so let's call it 32. Mm -hmm. The Courtney you see at 32, at two years ago, right, a complete different person. In what way? In every way. What, always was funny. Always was cool. Yeah. Always was someone you want to be around. But what you see now is not the Courtney that any of us knew two, three, four years ago. And I think part of that might be the transition. I mean, from from this show starting, I mean, three years ago she didn't have a fashion blog. You know, she just decided to start it, and well, and all of this ago, has happened. She was doing the corporate, the work, as she said. She finally was yeah. like. Everyone keeps on asking, you know, your outfit, where'd you get this from? And she's like, God, I've really got a talent here. Screw this whole corporate thing. Yeah. I'm and that's what we're I mean, she's, she's funny. I mean, let me tell you what. Courtney's always been the one you want to be around when things yeah. aren't going well because she just makes you laugh. <laughs> yeah. And, Absolutely. And, and, and that's what we always were. We were always very, very good friends. And, 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 and we would, like, once every week or two, Myself and a couple of other guys, we'd want to just go somewhere with Courtney to like just laugh, right? And be happy and have a drink and put our phones away, and and that's what Courtney would do. She cared so much about everybody else; it was never about her. Okay. And then all of a sudden, you know, as this started to happen, it became about her and I. Right. And let me tell you what: we might have filmed that television show for six months. I mean, really, which mm -hmm. is a long time for a reality TV show, um, and. The first five months of it, if, if you'd asked me what was going on with Courtney and I, from my side, I would have said, oh, it's my homie. 
Absolutely. She's my best friend. I'd have no other... I get to do this with my best friend. She's yeah. great. Yeah, hang right? out. I'm dating girls along the entire way, not even yeah. thinking twice. And you see that in the show. Mm. In the first show. Yeah. And then about the last three weeks, you know, it, it gets brought to my attention that on in Courtney's filming, there may be other things going on. So I say... Okay, I'm you know not that I don't want to blame being caught up in the moment because I, I I love her as a person and Absolutely. did at the time and and always will for who she is as a friend, but um, you know the last couple of weeks we I say look we'll 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 make it fun right like right. we'll give it a go we'll yeah. we'll mm. tease the next season I'll take her I play that last episode we went out yeah. to yeah. my family's lake house ranch mm -hmm. I planned the entire deal. I, it yeah. was it was my charity event, yeah. which I planned, and then I said I'll away. take her out to my family place. I, everything that you saw there was not produced, was no production. I planned the entire deal. It was on only we were there for less than twenty four hours, but if you watch the TV show, you don't know any different. You would think that the entire season was about her and I eventually being together, but right. in actuality, if we filmed for six months, two weeks A of it period. might have been. The fact that her and I might be together. Right. And do you think coming off of, of that show and your relationship and coming into this show, which is, I mean, she is so about her career right now. And for me as a woman and at that age that she was when that show filmed and then now moving into her 30s, I mean, I'm in my late 20s. For me, it's so empowering to watch a woman that's like always growing up wanting babies, always growing up wanting that man, the hopeless romantic as she deems herself. And that date that you planned was like, mega romance right to to being like no i'm gonna focus on my career like she goes in this episode and she's she's like working out she's doing this this uh 10 most beautiful people she's planning meetings with companies to collaborate with them in the fashion world she's got this blog like like th that's something that i feel like you as a businessman like you said your finance you've always kind of been that way you were mm -hmm. as a man raised to kind of think that way don't you think but say the different thing though she and I think, as you said, I certainly commend her for going out there and being so career-focused because it's against all of her. She says, like, her best friends, all of her friends constantly put pressure on her. Yeah. And as she says, being in the South and, this, you know, the strong importance of settling down, finding the man, having kids, and that's what everyone's doing. She's going completely against the grain. So every day she's literally fighting even her closest friends. Sure. They just right. want to set her up. They just want to be on dates. I commend and anybody. Like, nah. You're right. I commend anybody for following their heart, their dreams, working hard, building a bit, whatever they're doing in life. I yeah. commend people because I like to think positively about everything. Yes. Good. But ultimately, all of us justify where we are in our life by whatever means necessary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. The other people in Courtney shows that have two, that have two kids and are married and have a career, if you if the show was about them, they would be justifying how happy they are in their marriage with their two kids and their career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The show happens to be about Courtney, so of course she's going to justify and talk about how yeah. hard she's going after this and the reason why I'm not with anybody is because I'm pursuing my career. Well, you know, it's because that's her position in life, and so we all justify whatever it is we're doing. Right, of course. So I want to I wanna talk for a second about, in, in this episode tonight, Tori sets her up with some guy. Jeff, right? Mr. Jeff, Mr. Yeah. Boring. And he's like the nicest guy, but it shows her getting ready for the date, and like, and I'm guilty of doing this, like washing like only the front part of your hair that like it's the greasiest or the grossest or whatever the fastest and she talks about like if guys only knew what we do to get ready for dates uh like the hour before like what's really going on before they get there and open that door like i'm curious like for guys like is there anything that guys do when they're getting ready you know what i mean like is this or, stuff that you do don't you want try the on to 10 say? different shirts do you or is it like do you just go from like your work meeting and pick up a girl and that's the way that dating is for guys <sighs> Yeah, I don't. You might. I think you're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, Matt, are you serious? You don't do any prep or anything for a date. You know what? Unf I mean, I'm 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 in my 30s, and um, I I'm you know I've had I've, I'm one of these people that just has a lot going on day to day. So unfortunately, I put very little thought into anything I do. 
So for me, I mean, I just, I, I, you know, it's on my calendar. I go the one thing to the next and it's part of my life. So like, you know, I, I yeah. think that, yes, I, I think guys should. I think that you got to slow down in life and appreciate everything, whether it be a date, a walk in the park, a meeting, whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. <laughs> I think, but I do think, yes. That's what yes. the 40s are for, right? <laughs> I, I hope so. I think you got to slow down and, and, and appreciate everything in life and, 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 you know, take a lot of thought into everything you're doing. But I'm just one of those guys that, I mean, it, you know, every, every hour, every day just comes and, I don't know, I just take it with a grain right. of salt. So, so I'm, I'm the worst one to ask. <laughs> so be, being that kind of a guy, and then we saw this, this, like bless him. What heart. about the hemorrhoid cream and the wrapping yourself up oh, in glad wrap? Yeah. Huh? I mean, so, that, I, Courtney. Yeah. I haven't seen it. What happened? So, she needs to. She wants to lose weight and look in her absolute best for the D magazine. Her photo shoot. shoot. Yeah. So she figures her personal trainer. Someone has told her that this is what you're supposed to do. You cover yourself in hemorrhoid cream. Stinks like absolute shit. And then you wrap oh, yourself up great. in glad wrap, and she sleeps in the she, stuff. Dalen came over and like wrapped her up in like. By the way, Dalen's food. great. <laughs> oh, and they eat He's pizza so and wine while she's wrapped yes. up because that's that, so gonna that's, work that way. I one thing that I love about her uh, as somebody that's not a drinker, she's everything. Like, there's always a way to have a glass of wine involved in almost anything, everything. including that. But. But did I did she do that kind of stuff always like you know any little beauty trick did she ever like dress she in or talk to you obsessed with how she looked in her parents when you were no I don't know what but, you so guys you didn't have talk to know about that talk, like just no, we were function. homies what you have to understand about the show mm -hmm. when I watched the first t the one the first one we did yeah I was blown away because there were scenes where she would do an interview and she'd say you know, it'd be like her waiting at my house for me to come home for dinner. And she'd say, oh, yeah, m you know, Matt's mother and I are the only ones that have a key to Matt's house. At that episode, Courtney had never even been to my house before. She had a key waiting. I, I had left a key out front for her to be able to get there in time to film that. Right. Yeah. And knowing you would be home after her. No, and I'd be home after. Right. I, Courtney had never even been to my house yet. In her interview, she says that her and my mother are the only ones that have a key to my house. We had a family dinner on that TV show. Mm -hmm. And look, I apologize to Pink Snickers because I do really like you guys a lot. Love all of you. And, and I love everybody we film with, but these are just facts. Yeah. This is what blew me away. Courtney, at our, we had a family dinner, and she would talk about how much she loved my family and everything. Yeah. It was the first time my family and her ever had dinner. Very ever. interesting. First time she'd ever met my grandmother, and she loves my grandmother. Yeah, of course. These are the things that happen on, you know, that when I'm, I didn't know because mm -hmm. everyone does their interviews by themselves. Right. And and I'm watching television thinking, did you speak? That's to her? a flat out lie. Did so, you get in contact with her about that and say like, hey, Courtney, what's up? Of course. Up? And so, but she would, but it didn't matter because by the time the thing was over, in her mind, we had a relationship. And someone told me that they watched the first season, the first episode, uh, you know, TV show the of her new season one. premiere of her. Of and Courtney she Love refers Dallas. to me as her ex boyfriend. She does, and yeah. I was just going to ask you about that boyfriend. Her, Courtney and I have never been intimate together. Mm -hmm. We've yeah. never been on a date ever outside of the TV show. Every one of our mutual friends for many, 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 right. many years, not one of them would indicate you, to you in, 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 in a minute degree that they would ever consider us to be anything more than friends. Mm -hmm. Ever. Yet, I'm referred to as an ex-boyfriend. Ex Dun, dun, dun. Blows me away. <laughs> and, 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 and Courtney's upset because after the TV show, I was dating other women. You weren't even together. But that wasn't we were not, the way my, you looked at it. I'm things. like, you're my homie. Like, where's my, right. like, no, give me some knuckles. Hey. Like, what are you talking about? Right. Why can't I do it? I, I, the whole thing is, is unbelievable to me. So do you think that... She, I mean, it, it kind of sounds like, are you saying she should have known better? To, like, as your best known girlfriend. Known better. She knew every, I, I never hid one thing from her. 
for five years of being friends. And that's the kind of guy it seems like you are or always strive to be with anybody that you've dated. Like very open about this is exactly the page that I'm on. Be in the same book or don't. Right. Think right? about, do you have a brother? Two. Do you have a brother? No. Okay. So to <laughs> someone who has a brother. Yeah. Courtney was like a sister to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And obviously you never date your brother because of right. like your brother. But if, if you had a, a guy friend that was you were that close with mm -hmm. and who told you things as if you were a, a sister to them. They tell you things that they can't tell anybody else because, Absolutely. Yeah. like, the down and dirty, dark secret. Right. You would never tell another woman right. unless you were sure that for the rest of your life they were going <laughs> to be nothing more than a friend right. or a sister. Yeah. And if they weren't before, telling them that is what changes it. It's what kills <laughs> yeah. it. Like, there's no way to go back from the things I'm about to tell you. Yeah. Like, we right. can never but have... But does it, uh, what you say... Those were the things I told Courtney. But that, that, just, that changed the relationship, though, like in terms of the way you saw Courtney. And you're saying that you literally saw her as a sister. A sister. There was no sexual. There no. Was no. Zero. And not because she's not a pretty girl. Mm. Courtney is a pr very pretty girl. I agree. And she's she's very smart and driven. Mm. And got, has a great family and mother. I mean, she has a lot of amazing qualities that any man would be lucky to have. Right. So I. But from the beginning of her and I's relationship, she was dating... A, a guy that is still to this day a very dear friend of mine mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm one of those guys that I would never date a woman that has been intimate or dated a friend of mine, right. a close friend of mine that I talk Especially. to on a mm -hmm. consistent basis for a period of time. So if you're not the guy for Courtney, and we see in this episode Jeff, and she just talks about how nice he is and quiet, and it's, as you know, she's big hair, big personality, big everything, like... She's not going to be with some guy that's just going to like be quiet and sit on the sidelines. I don't think to her. But the so, thing who is, do you think? Oh. with that episode though, what's interesting, the fact that you're talking about your relationship with her now, is that they use her relationship with you as the example. Jeff, the guy she goes out with, is never going to be, you know, meet up to Matt's standard. He's not going to throw her against the wall, grab her hair, as she and said. And they show that. They be really show the lake, the And show the two of you date. kissing and being really, you know, intimate with each other. And she's just like, yep, it's not going to work with Jeff. Because he's, you. he's never going to, like, be able to, like, manhandle me, yeah. <laughs> basically, the way that they imply that you had. So it's it's very, and this is why I wanted to, to bring you on and kind of get your take on it just because... As far as, you know, what I've ever seen watching the shows, y you know her better than any other guy, um, being her best friend and, and knowing her as long as you have. Mm. I did. So. I, I did. I knew, we knew each other very well. If you ask me right now, I would tell you, um, it, you know, and, and just being candid, I, I love her to death and want her to be very successful and have all the things she's ever desired because... I, I, I really, really genuinely think she's a great person and I love her family. I don't know who she is. Zero Anymore. clue. Really? To, if you asked me three years ago if there was a woman other than blood to me that I knew better, would be nobody than Courtney. Yeah. If you Hands asked, down, no brainer. If you asked me today, I would tell you I have zero clue who she is, what she thinks, what she wants, nothing. Uh, what uh, what would you sort of attest that to? Do you think it was because of the fact that you guys, once you stopped filming, that that was it? And she went on her own thing and wanted to concentrate uh, I, on the I fashion and the show? Or don't know. I think um, I, I, I couldn't even tell you what is real and what isn't with her. Mm. And it sounds like watching the show makes it even harder because of the different things and kind of the hyper reality that becomes part of filming a show. I, 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 do, I don't know why. I mean, but if you yeah. ask anybody who filmed reality television, mm. and, and this is, you know, look, I, I have no knock on reality television. I mean, I'm, you know. It's huge. <laughs> it's, it's a, well, it's a big thing, you know. And, and in fact, you know, I met with, I'm not even going to talk about it, but <laughs> um, for example, I watched a thing the other day with Kristen Cavallari. Mm -hmm. Right, and and I know a lot of all those people from the, the that that particular one, which was like kind of the beginning, right? Um, yes. They asked her, and I just happened to catch this, and they said, 
you know, everybody would like to see you and Jay Cutler on a TV and then do it the right way. Now you're married, you have mm-hmm. a baby coming or they're engaged, whatever, you know, tastefully right. thing, the right? Whole thing. Mm. And she's like, her answer was, and, and, and mind you, that was the beginning of all the kind of like reality right, stuff. Right, when, when she filmed. Laguna, mm-hmm. whatever it was. Yeah. And she says, looks at the camera and says, you got to be kidding me. I would, you couldn't pay me any amount of money to subject my family to reality wow. television because I've been around since it began. I've been around every one of these shows that ever existed since the beginning of mine when it first started. Mm-hmm. And all it's ever done is ruin relationships. Every time, never in the history has there been one that made one better. I go to a Bible study here that we started um, about a year ago in Hollywood, and it's really turned into a wonderful thing, and I think we're changing a lot of lives. Sorry for making a plug on that. <laughs> but uh, there, there's a handful of these ex-reality people in there, and I see them, people from The Bachelor and this and that. Mm-hmm. And I've spoken with them, and, and they all say, everybody says the same thing. Reality, it, 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 um, it, it just ruins relationships. And in Kristen's case, I saw this thing, and I was like, that's unbelievable. Here's a girl with a husband and, and a Baby. child on the way and who's wise and, and older now and living in a different city. She's not in Hollywood. It's a perfect thing for her to go out and make a bunch of money so. and just put her family. She goes, it would. I wouldn't do it because I know what it would do. So even, you would never do reality TV Are again. you kidding? So but what, what did does you that even say know? about Courtney doing another show knowing? I, I don't know if she knows. And, and for... And do you think that's because she's still in it? Look. You know what I mean? Like when you, you said you get caught up think after about them you all. got out. Okay. Um, Bethany. Bethany right? Franklin. Yeah. Frankel. Bethany made a, did a great job branding her product. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot then, of people have come out of reality shows. Right. Better business people, I would say. And with, is, with Be- a huge is Bethany brand. still married? No. 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 There you Ruined go. Ruined her relationship. So, it's Listen, probably better you guys aren't together. Ta- Taylor from Real Housewives, for a good friend of mine. I saw her lose her husband over it. And almost, and I'm not even going to go into what almost happened there. That's a pretty strong yeah, yeah, call yeah, because no. he committed suicide. Well. I mean, would you say that it reality was, TV? He was, I wouldn't call it, I wouldn't say reality TV is the, is the reason for that. Mm. Although I could sit here for an hour and a half and talk mm-hmm. to you guys about details behind that yeah, yeah we but i'm very I'm, I'm friends with taylor and you know i haven't talked to her in at least a year or two i think she's married now even but there was things that that it definitely didn't help no of course not but i'm just telling you that i can't think of a time in reality television and i've got friends for 10 years that have done these things mm. that any one of them have walked away with an overall positive feeling about what it did for relationships can do a lot for an individual Other who's thing, not yeah. in one. Has has being on a show helped your career at all? Do you, would you say? Help my career? Yeah. In what? Business. I mean, just in general, media exposure, awareness, of PR, you are, your your foundation. Um, it ha- if anything, it has done good things for the foundation. Yes. Okay. Well, that's good. Because it because it can be it can be a great thing for a brand. Absolutely. Well, we're watching that with Courtney. I mean, she right. she. She ha- I now know because I have followed her blog for about a year and saw that she collaborated with Bobble Bar, which we're watching in these episodes. She I- At the end of this episode, she meets with like their CEO, and we see in the next episode, it looks like... Mm-hmm. I mean, she is so hungry for her career. It's, it's re- like I was saying before, it's refreshing to see somebody as a woman coming into her own, even if it's at 28 years old, and and just kind of being like, you know what, like... I'm not. I'm not lucky in love. I haven't been lucky in love. Ex-boyfriend or not, like boring, nice guy Jeff dates or not, mm-hmm. like I'm gonna focus on me and my career. And and to watch her do that and like the success that's come from it for me has been has been kind of like inspiring as far as like look what you can do if you kind of get selfish a little bit. I think it's also opened up and allowed a lot more girls or women, you know, in their late 20s, 30s to relate to her more because, you know, she gets, I mean, she does, she gets pretty much nude, both her and her girlfriend in that last episode, Tori and stuff, in the shower. Uh I mean, you know, they're not the atypical Beverly Hills wives 
you know, like no. Taylor or something, body. She's very a real open. girl. She's there Definitely talking girls. about Beautiful. diets. I mean, I'm talking a real about girl. Working I out. Look like a real girl. Real girl, exactly. Yeah. As she said, she wants to be portrayed as the real girl that literally is just trying to make it, going against the grain, not settling down, yeah. married, and loves fashion. Yeah, and is now making a career out of that. Well, I'm excited to see what happens in the coming episodes with. With her meeting with Bobo Bar and, and the dinner with you, we'll look forward to seeing how that all goes out. And if you're around and you want to come I'm back. I'm sure Matt is looking <laughs> forward to seeing how no. that's going because he has no clue. <laughs> He's like, really? I'll Did out, I really I'll be, do that? I'll be out of town, but I <laughs> yes. can tell you that that particular dinner I went into with all positive thoughts and wanted it to be great. But boy, did I feel set up after that deal. Well, totally. Live and learn, right? Well, and we're, we're going to continue to watch her do that in, in the coming episodes of the show. Uh, you know, go on iTunes, like us, comment, let us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong here at After Buzz. We love to get your feedback so that we can just make all of this better for you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you for watching and loving with me. Courtney loves Dallas. We will awesome, see you next Courtney. time. Yeah. Thanks, guys. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.